Hello, everyone. Welcome to the eSight Vision Central on cooking today on June 24th, 2022. And uh, we'll just uh, wait a few minutes here to get uh, everyone in, into the room. Welcome and thank you for joining. We should have a fun uh, webinar today. And uh, we have a variety of kind of cooking techniques and topics that we're going to going to cover. And uh, we're going to have a, a Q&A at the end. And I hope that everyone in, enjoys this. And uh, I'm just going to check here to make sure people are, are coming in yep which is great perfect okay well i think this could get started and people can keep on joining if they're a few minutes late so uh, we'll uh, have some fun here and discuss cooking topics so today's agenda uh just we're going to learn about using eSight when we're cooking and uh, then we'll have some questions at the end and i'm going to start off with a bit of housekeeping just general principles and stuff with eSight to follow along um, so this is a live event, so things might happen, um, you know, technology issues might occur and so forth, but we should be good. Um, this is for users only. Um, you can raise your hand to ask questions throughout the program, or you can uh, wait to the end and if we might not notice them. To raise your hand on a Mac, it's options Y, and on a PC, it's alt Y. And then that will put a little hand icon up on the, up on the screen. Um, this session should only take about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we have a few videos, so it might be a little closer to, to 45, uh, but I think it'll be fun and uh, enjoyable. As for the basic foundations of, you know, getting ready and using your eSight for cooking, uh, making sure that the eSight is fitting properly um, is important. So making sure for your eSight 4 that it's not too tight, it's not too loose, um, and that if things are feeling comfortable, you have the, the screens uh, in view properly and how you would like to, to wear it. Um, and, you know, same for the eSight 3, making sure the back strap is, is snug and everything's feeling good. Because if you're trying to do, you know, something like cooking that involves a lot of hand-eye coordination, Nation, um, you know, and you're finding things that are not feeling comfortable as they should be, uh, you might not have as much of an enjoyable experience. Um, eSight is designed to keep you mobile with the bioptic tilt and to help with hand eye coordination. You will see in our videos today with the cooking that we do uh, utilize the bioptic tilt quite a bit, depending on what, what we're doing. Um, so you will see in like, some of the videos for myself. Um, I'm trying to, I'm barbecuing with the eSight, and there's parts where you'll see a part of the fence because I'm looking underneath with my normal vision um, as I'm recording that video through the eSight. Our uh, cable management is important. So, you know, having a system that helps uh, with the cable is, is something to keep in mind. Um, this is more, you know, eSight 3 users. If you are, you know, doing things around the kitchen or around the grill, uh, you may want to make sure the cord is tucked behind your, your shoulder and then running down to the controller. Or if you are, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to necessarily get the uh, cord snanked at all um, when you're doing things. When I first started uh, barbecuing with the, the eSight um, and, and getting comfortable with it, my cord actually swung out closer to the grill. Nothing happened to it, but it, it surprised me. And uh, that was one of the things, even myself as a coach, I went, oh, gotta make sure I tuck the cord behind my arm when I do it. So just something to keep in mind. Um, also, for eSight 4 users, having additional batteries on hand is a, is a good idea. Um, you know, if you're trying to do something and then the battery, you know, dies and you're scrambling to find that other battery might be challenging. And especially, say, if you're cooking something and you're close to, say, flipping a burger or a pancake or trying to, you know, get something out of the stove. Um, if you know that battery is running down, you can just quick, quickly swap to another battery. All right. So, for Using the eSight with cooking, we have a number of things we're going to look at. Uh, first thing uh, video we're going to do is viewing stove buttons and uh, kitchen appliance buttons with Cosmo. Then we're going to look at making a smoothie with Jeanette, uh, do some campfire cooking with Richard, and then some pancake making with Judith, and uh, also using uh, eSight on the barbecue when I try to make some uh, cheeseburgers for my daughter. And then we'll do a, a Q&A. Oh, my bad. There we go. See, we're live. Seems like that happened. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pull up the first video here of Cosmo uh, showing some stovetop buttons. And I'm just going to narrate what he's doing here. He wasn't able to attend at the moment, but we will get it going. I'm going to make it big. There we go. And Richard, you can see the video, correct? That's correct. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to play the video here. So Cosmo here is looking at a stove 
and he's uh, utilizing the east side here and using the the magnification and uh as he's uh, using it here he's pointing at different buttons such as the bake and and the broil and this is how he he can see what's on the stove and he's got some you know pans there and stuff he doesn't have to lean over it which is nice and then when he's going to put, you know move his hand to the other parts of the panel he's utilizing the finder button um with and then you know, can look at the time and input the time on the display and then there's a start button right there that he can he can zoom in on to and then when he pulled it back he's actually you know using the finder and he's going to go over to his, his dishwasher here and the dishwasher is uh, underneath the countertop uh, ledge it's sticking out a bit you can see it, it looks a little blurry at first then he just repositions the the e-site to get that autofocus to really the, to kind of reset itself and you can tell it's much clearer here so you've got the on off button the sanitize button and these buttons are silver buttons on a silver display which can make it challenging to see so and you know he's added some contrast um to to what is uh what's there to make it really pop out more and then he's got his uh, microwave here and uh, he can add some contrast and see when he's turning the dials and inputting the uh the microwave time and what he the what the power he'd like to do here which works out uh, works out well and you can see the the numbers there for the different power levels and uh, the different settings that he can he can make and then uh over here, we get a cameo from his family, which is which is cool. And uh, he's got his uh, son Cage there, and I think James is there as well. And uh, the, also there is CC. So, a nice little hat. So there's Cosmo using the stove buttons and so forth. And uh, he also uses the site to you know quickly look over and see his family, which is a really nice thing. In all honesty, you know you're not just limited with the site to looking at one thing. You can you know do some stuff in the kitchen, look over, watch your family. And I've done that quite a bit as well. You know I can be doing one activity and pay attention to my daughter the other way. All right. So next for our next video, we're going to be doing making smoothies with Jeanette, and I'm going to pull this video oh, up here. See, we're live. There we go. I'm going to make it big, pause it, crank up the sound. And Jeanette narrates this video, so I'll be quiet for a moment. And Richard, you can see the video, correct? Correct. All right. I can too. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Jeanette. Making a smoothie with e Safe 4. Yep. Okay. So I am making a smoothie and I'm going to start by washing the orange. I always believe in washing absolutely everything. Let's make sure what I'm doing here. Put a little bit of veggie wash on there. Just a little bit. Okay, it's all washed. This is not going to peel it. I like to wash everything. I grab a little bit of kitchen paper up here, dry it all off. Okay, put this on the counter. Lovely. I'm going to go and get myself a knife, paring knife from the vegetable drawer. That's good enough for me. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to just cut this off. This makes it much, much easier. Just open this drawer right here, put it in there. And we're just going to make some incisions down the side. Just to help for the peel to be easy to do. I do it partially by feel and partially with my e -sight. That's what we've seen today I with the uh, to see what I'm doing as well. Partially by feel. I love that skin. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll peel it straight into here. There we go. Okay. Just peel it with your fingers. Once you've separated the little segments, you can just peel away. 
And hopefully it comes off these are organic oranges from Florida, I think they're from Florida, which is where I am. So you can see that okay. I'm using bioptic uh, fill, which is why you're getting, <laughs> I'm a bit you're getting the view of the, uh, okay. of the kitchen paper as well, because I'm mixing I'm my vision with the advanced vision of the I'm going to get a glass. I'm just making sure that this is all in the video. Okay, I think I'm going to get myself a nice long glass here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some coconut water in this glass. Okay, so I'm going to put that. Give it a good shake. Maybe I should just increase the zoom and the contrast just a little bit. Just because, and I'm going to use my app for this, this is why I love the telephone app because when you're in the kitchen, you don't necessarily want your remote with you, but you always need you always need the 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 zoom and the the ability to have all of that. So I just put my phone there. That's my Take this coconut the water beautifully. App goes to eSight four. And I'm going to pour. I'm using my eSight to see that liquid going in the glass. I don't know if you can see it through the video. Um, I'm saying I'll do a little bit more. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I can see the jug from here, so I'm going to pour this liquid into the jug. Now, whenever you're using the Vitamix, the thing that you need to do is always start with the soft items first. So you start with the water. And I'm going to use a little bit of Orgain plant-based, a little bit of Orgain plant-based protein powder, just to give it a little bit of oomph. So can you see that? This is now, I've got too much on the spoon there. I'm going to take a little bit, just flatten it like that so it's nice level. Now I'm looking for the jug. In it goes. Okay, and then put this lid back here. All right, so now I'm going to pop the orange in there. Hold, it doesn't matter. The Vitamix doesn't care. Now, I got this baby here. Organic fruit and spinach mix. It is wonderful. Frozen. Costco. So this is a time saver, you know, oftentimes we're in a hurry, especially on a lunch break. I'm going to throw this away because this is the last one I have. This is lovely. So I'm actually going to get a pair of scissors and just, just line them up here. And cut, put those away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this directly. Can you see that jug there? This is going to go directly in there. Oh, and you're going to see that Vitamix is going to go through it like mush. Put it on here. Set that on the Vitamix. Okay, hope you can all see this. And because I've got my eSight, I can see when that's on and when that's off. So we can see that that light just went on. So the Vitamix is on. I'm just going to pop this over here for now. Stainless steel, you can and see I'm that reflective surface. Turn this baby on. Now it's got several settings. You don't really have to see this, but it's good. It does help. So it's got several settings, and the one I'm going to put it on is going to be for a smoothie. And I'm just going to press start. Voila. I'm going to take this baby off, open up the cap, 
Now, watch for the glass because here you have uh, a not a very well contrasted surface. So if you want more contrast to make this surface really stand out, because we've got dark on dark granite, let's see if that actually makes a difference. And I would say it probably does make a bit of a difference actually to really increase that contrast if you have issues with trying to see what you're doing. Okay, so now we've got the pouring, we've got the jug, we've got the cup, here it goes. I'm just going to taste it to see if it works. So and that, there we go. Yeah, there we go. And and um, you know that I find that the contrast really does help in the kitchen, especially when you've got a dark granite surface. And I also love the fact that the telephone app. The eSight app that goes with eSight 4 allows you to have a virtual remote control on your phone, so you don't need to take a physical remote control in the kitchen with you. You can even just use the swipe pad on the side of the eSight. Can you see? Probably can't see what I'm doing right here because uh, of the screen sharing, but I'm swiping the right hand side of the eSight head unit. It's got a little swipe pad there. So you've got that, or you've got the remote control of the eSight app as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, next we're going to look at some campfire cooking with Richard. I'm going to open up the video now. All right, so um, this is primitive cooking, and I'm going to show you some real basic uh, basic techniques that I'm using for it. Um, all I'm really going to be using is um, Zoom, because that's really all that I need for this situation. Now, um, I do want to let you know that those hot dog sticks I'm using, they are about uh, three feet long, and I'm probably about five feet away from the fire. So um, you can tell I'm definitely zooming in. Um, and like we've talked about earlier with the bioptic tilt, when you see it pan up to my daughter or my wife, um, I'm actually using my bioptic tilt and looking underneath and then looking back down to try to um, keep an eye on how the hot dogs are coming. So, um, but it was kind of neat because like I, uh, not only could I see the hot dogs and stuff, I could like, you know, really see the fire. So. You know, normally I might not be able to tell if I was in the fire or close to it. And, you know, I'm trying to be close to it without being in it because I want the actual inside of the hot dogs to cook as well. Um, so, yeah, we just, um, you know, I'm resting the stick on the stone. I can see that it's in a good spot there. And then I just kind of rotate it once in a while. And um, that's, uh, they came out pretty good i'm i'm not a big hot dog guy but these were these are pretty good i had a I definitely felt a little sense of accomplishment um so yeah it's uh <clears throat> now one thing you can tell like um the the lighting does make the hot dogs look a little a little light um but that's uh i, I didn't have any real problems with it it's just a real sunny day for sure but, and and also, you're 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 looking right into the fire too, right? To yeah. the ash, yeah. and, stuff and, stuff. and then you got the flames coming up on the fire, uh, which yeah. is something to consider. All right, perfect. And I'll open up the next video there, Richard. And uh, there we go. And here we go. Here, you know, everyone's favorite campfire activity: uh, roasting marshmallows. So, um, what I'm showing you here is just I'm going to be using the techniques that I learned that Jeanette taught me about hand-eye coordination and using that to get the um, marshmallows on the hot dog stick here. So I put a couple on there and I'm just kind of lining it up, see it. And as we also said, partially by sight, partially by feel. Okay, I got my, got my marshmallows and we're gonna get ready to roast them. And once again, that was um, using the bioptic tilt looking underneath so I could then um, 
get the stick positioned and then zoom in to make sure I'm in a spot where I'm going to warm and cook the marshmallows, but not completely crispy critter them. Um, those are good sometimes. I, I kind of like those, but we were making s'mores this evening, so um, I didn't want to uh, burn them to a crisp. <laughs> and what I like about um, using the e to to do the marshmallows is you can, like it was really easy to see them start getting done. And that's usually, like I said, a really big challenge for me because they're either completely white or completely charred black. <laughs> and so this was nice to be able to actually really, really kind of see that. Um, and when you see me look at the stick, I'm um, using that to kind of follow my way up and then find my marshmallows again. So yeah, it was a nice little family cookout. <laughs> very, very nice. Thank you, Richard. Okay. So next we're going to look at a video by Judith uh, and she makes some pancakes in her kitchen. So it's that video loaded up here right now. Okay, so today I'm just going to show you how I make pancakes with insight. Um, the first thing I would do is I would preset the dial to pan fry. So it's hard for me to see at this point. So I'm going to magnify it. I'm going to give it about an 11 zoom. And then I'm going to use my finder button to be more precise. Um, I'll take my hand, position it where the square is, let go. And then I can see the dials and what it says. So I'm going to turn it all the way to pan fry. There we go. The light and pan fry are leveled. And now I'm just going to wait for this to heat up. I'm going to grab my pancake batter and just mix it. Perfect. I have all of the looks nice and smooth. And then I'll just give it some time. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to just show you my coffee machine here because I really love my coffee. And um, I find that the e-site helps me with this as well. So you see I have my little panel up here um, for the coffee, and I put my coffee pod in there. Um, the e-site just makes it really, really convenient and really easy for me to, like, align my cup up and... I can even organize all my coffees. Let me reset my view so you can see. Okay, so let's go back to the pan and see how that's coming along. Okay, it's getting a little bit warm. Um, I also like to use the bioptic tilt at this point um, because I like to see the bigger objects in my natural vision, like the bowl, I can grab the bowl, but then I can look back down at the pan. So I'm going to just take one spoonful of the mix. And I actually pour it right in. Here. And maybe one more here. So there I have my pancakes on the grill. I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, just to see if the bubbles are forming. And it looks to me like they are. Very nice. So again, buy off the tilt so I can see the pancakes with my natural vision and then look through my e-site at the pancakes. 
I like them crispy, so I'm just going to wait a few more minutes, even though it is a really quick grill. I've tried making pancakes without the yeast site, and I find it very difficult to see the bubbles at the top to let me know that it's ready. So here we go. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same with this pancake. Very nice. And then last but not least, there they are. I think my kids will be very happy. It's my son's last day of school, so he'll get a pancake breakfast. So, of course, I can't see the bubbles, but I'll just give them a couple minutes each, and they'll be ready to take off. I genuinely enjoy making pancakes with eSight. Uh, it just gives me the flexibility to see what I'm doing. I know that I've set the dial to the correct heat temperature. There's no gassing. I have my remote nearby. If I happen to misplace my remote, I always have my trackpad on the side. So it's good. It's convenient. Mmm, that looks really good and crispy. Perfect. And there they are. Mmm. Happy to discuss any time and uh, do another tutorial any time because, like I said, I do this quite often and I really, really like making my pancakes this way. Okay, so we got a nice video there from Judith, which is great. Watch me make the uh, pancakes. And then the final thing I'm going to show today is I'm going to be using the Eastside on the barbecue and uh, making some burgers for my for my daughter here. I'm going to load up that video. And oops, there we go. So let's see. Okay, so here I am just trying to show uh, how I have my setup. I like to set everything up before I start doing a task. So I have my burgers, barbecue sauce, and cheese on the left-hand side. And I like to put my um, scraper and the flipper on the right-hand side. And uh, here I'm just opening up the bottom of the barbecue and turn on the propane. And I'm more doing this by feel and touch, but I can look in there and uh, make sure everything's good. And then so I'm turning on the propane and then here are the dials for my barbecue. And I like to set the uh, the middle dial mostly to start off with at the beginning, and I can zoom in and I can see the where it's set. Um, the dials themselves do have a lot of high contrast um, with the black and white and the red, um, which is great. And uh, there's a little ignite button right there. And I am trying to wait for the propane to come through, so I have it set, and I'm just waiting for the propane to come up. And uh, I can press the ignite button to uh, to light it. Um, you know, waiting for that smell to drift off from the grill. And uh, I am trying to light the uh, barbecue right now. I'm not being very successful. Um, we can zoom in. The nice thing is the east side onto that grill plate down there. And I can see the uh, fire if it you know, lights and comes up. So I end up turning on the uh, closer burner to me. So I have two burners going to, uh, to get the propane up there. And then I try pressing the igniter again. And there we go. We got the fire lit up. And uh, so I have two of the three burners on right now, and I can just zoom in there and, you know, always just check, make sure things are, you know, everything's coming up. There's no flare up. Sometimes I've had it where, you know, the plates are misaligned there, the disbursement plates and the fire's coming off the side instead of going straight up. I can zoom in on that, which is good. And then I add the uh, third burner on and uh, then that will light and go from, go from there. And I can just check everything out and make sure uh, everything comes on. Which is which is great, and I can add a bit of contrast too to really make the uh, the flames pop out to for the uh, dark and the uh, the light there. 
Okay, so I'm zooming out here and I'm just, I have the remote beside me in my pocket. I'm just reaching down in my pocket and adjusting the remote and I am using the biopic tilt as well. So I'm gonna let it heat up before I get to um, cleaning the grill itself. So I'm just closing the lid here and I can zoom in on the uh, thermometer here and uh, follow along. And the uh, thermometer is already slowly going up and I like to start cleaning the grill when it gets to about 400 or so at the top. And uh, I find it gets quite nice and warm. I can use the scraper to uh, scrape anything off there. And I have a, a wooden scraper here that you'll see. And I'm utilizing the bioptic tilt as well as, as, as my, my vision to, to zoom in. So I can zoom in and make sure things are lined up. But when I get to the back part of it, because of the top rack, I do like to use my bioptic tilt. Make sure I don't bump the top of my wrist there, or the part of my hand, um, family, and I will get up uh, so warm. So I just you know, give that a little scrape there. And now I'm going to place my burgers on the, on the grill. I'm um, just making two burgers today. So I just kind of know I'm gonna put them in the middle and line them up there. And I'm utilizing, so when I look up, when you see the camera looks up, that's my uh, normal vision, just when I toss them on. And then I'm going to uh, close, the, uh, close the lid and let them cook for a bit. I did a number of uh, little videos here and I added the clips together. And I also turned down the burner a little bit on the, on the right hand side. So we got the first one there, and I like to zoom in to check the burgers. Uh, when they get to get a bit compact, I know they're cooking on that side, which is uh, which is good. The um, you know I can tell that side different than this side they're shriveling. So after all, bring up the uh, spatula, and I know I can start to uh, lift them up and uh, get them going. Sometimes you know you can see a bit of a flare up there when you go to flip them or if you see some pieces when you try to scrape it, I can see some pieces around the burger. But so maybe should have waited a few more minutes, but uh, but I got it no problem. And the second one came up easy. I gave that a little flip, probably give my bioptic tilt looked up, gave it turn over and then look back down. Here I have my barbecue sauce. I got the uh, little container there, barbecue sauce, and I have a brush. My technique, and, and I always get different techniques, I like to brush it on the burger and uh, then give it a flip after and, and cook it in a bit. So I'm using the zoom here and I've cranked up the contrast to really see what I'm doing there with the uh, with the burger. Because I'm in the middle of the of the rack, I find, uh, of the grill, I find it cooks well, but you always just want to be a little cautious of that top um, that top thing. So it's that using a bioptic tilt, I find very helpful in these situations. So I can quickly look up and down and, and go from there. And I have the contrast cranked probably to about 10 or so to really make that sauce stand out on the burger. And then I uh, close the lid and let them sit for a bit. And now I'm going to give them a give them a flip again. And nice thing is because of the magnification, I can stand back a little bit. I'm not I'm leaning over the grill to try to do this. So if there's any flare ups or anything like that, you just uh, do what it, what it does. Um, and then I'm gonna put the barbecue sauce on, on the, uh, on the other side. I'm just showing that there. And then, so I let them, that cook for a little bit. And then just having a look, make sure things are going well. The burgers at some points look a little bright because of the way the lighting is coming down from the sun. So I can just reposition myself and go from there. But I'm putting them on the top rack. And uh, so they're pretty much done. I just got to add the cheese. So I like to uh, cook them and then put them on the top rack, give them another, another flip, and then add the cheese to the other side and, and cook that on, on top. Um, when I'm taking the cheese off the wrapper, the first one came off very smoothly, no issues whatsoever. Uh, you just reach down and peel it off and get it on the burger. Second one didn't go as smoothly. You'll see me fight a little bit with it. And, uh, you know, just I can, I can, part of doing it, this is live. So I did this live and I was taking the cheese off there. But uh, not the greatest technique, but I got it off. And I'm using my optic tilt to check underneath to go, okay, you know, did I get it or how torn with it? And then I'm placing it on top of the burger. And uh, then I'm just looking, making sure everything's good. And then I realize the cheese is a bit misaligned. And I can see that easily with the contrast and the zoom. So just line that back up, give it, give it a close and just waiting to make sure everything's all melted and good. And I can zoom in there and, and you can see, really see the smoke with the contrast coming up. I open the lid, you can zoom in there on the, uh, on the burger and the cheese is, is melted, so now I got to get it off the uh, off the barbecue. And because the rack at the top is um, 
it's a bit wider than on the bottom. So I do always have to be careful. I have lost burgers falling in the middle or uh, wieners falling off, uh, you know, on the side there when trying to do it. So I always find lifting off the top rack can be a bit challenging, but um, each side helps a lot with that. Um, I have lost a few sausages and so forth over the years to the ground though. And as you see, when I'm scraping it, when I'm lifting it off, there is a bit of flare up and so forth, but I'm not close to the barbecue at all. Really, I'm using the uh, magnification as I plate the burgers, which works out great. And so I don't worry about any flare ups or anything like that. So there's the burgers. They turned out pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, the taste test worked well. Natalie liked them quite a bit. And uh, there's the video.